Here's how I use camera tracking data from the virtual production app JetSet to add a 3D character to my scene, and how I use Gaussian splats to get better visuals from the JetSet app. I've been using JetSet for a while, and now I want to see how else I can use the app. JetSet has all of this camera tracking data, so I'm going to see if I can use a second phone running JetSet to track an object in my scene. That way I can track in real time where Bytes is going to be and have more accurate eye lines. Also, how can I add Gaussian splats to the mix? In JetSet, I want to see my scene with lighting and with detail, and I can't do that with USD files. How can this workflow using free software take JetSet to the next level? And where are the limitations? That's what I want to figure out in this fourth episode of a six-part series sponsored by Lightcraft, the company that created the JetSet app. They've made it possible for me to make six episodes of a spin-off series in my Friends of Sophia universe, and six YouTube videos taking you behind the scenes like this one. They haven't asked me to say anything specific, so you're getting the honest opinion of a director, writer, and VFX artist who's using these tools to tell big sci-fi stories on an indie budget with a DIY mentality. So to get started, let's look at the finished fourth episode of Friends of Sophia Tidbits and Bites, and then we'll dive into the details. This is f***ed up, Bites. Every time I bring up the tiniest thing that bothers me, you shut down like this. You have to say something. You really expect me to behave like a human? Go find a medical android if that's what you want. These wires don't work that way. You need to get used to it. I have no way of knowing what's going on in there. I just see you staring at me. Oh, so I'm not supposed to look at you now? Got it, tidbits. If you could talk through these moments with me instead of this, we could actually learn more about each other. Get to know each other more deeply. Or these could be the moments that divide us little by little. Which do you want it to be? Like that! What is that? At least try to explain it to me. Please. Okay. In here. I'm constantly navigating a complex decision tree. An array of millions of possible responses to every moment, with a million possible outcomes, all existing at once. In every moment, I'm trying to choose the path along the tree with the most favorable outcome. The one that keeps you the happiest. Sometimes, that means not saying anything at all, while you process in a more linear way. Did that bring us closer together? JetSet is a virtual production app that lets you see your 3D scene in real time while you're on set. It tracks your camera position within that scene, calibrated to your cinema camera. It then puts all these pieces together into a Blender project using a second piece of software called AutoShot. You end up with a camera in your scene that has all the tracking data and a plane with your footage in 3D space. So I want to see if I can use that tracking data for Bytes, the robot in this series. To do this, I used a second iPhone running JetSet with the same scene and same origin point as our main JetSet phone attached to the camera. I put the phone on a light stand on a cart and we pulled the cart from out of frame. It was actually super cute and felt like we had a little droid on set. We made sure to do a 3D scan of the set with both phones, so if there were any discrepancies of the origin point or tracking or anything, I could reference this set geometry. And as you'll see in a bit, that did become necessary. What was great about having this second camera is that it gave BJ, who plays Tidbits, a proper eyeline. If you look closely at episode two, you can see how BJ was approximating where Bytes would be as he walked across the room. That's because my direction was, Bytes is gonna walk from here to here, so follow him with your eyes. But there was nothing to actually look at. It worked well enough for the wide shots of that episode, but in episode four, we're really focused on Tidbits' emotional arc and having their eyes locked on Bites as he walks is important to this moment. So it worked well to have something for BJ to look at and really lock their eyes onto. During production, the rest of our workflow with Jet Set and the cinema camera functioned normally. 
This involves calibrating the lens to account for the offset between the cinema camera and the jet set camera, scanning the set with the iPhone's LiDAR scanner, setting the origin point with these cards, which you can download from Lightcraft's website, and using the slate to sync the cinema footage and jet set clips. And I break down that workflow in more detail in the third behind the scenes episode. Then you roll a take as normal, viewing your scene in real time so you can frame your shot how you want it. You'll notice that unlike past shoots, we can see the scene with colorful lighting and more detail here. That's because instead of a USD file with mesh geometry, I used a Gaussian splat for the locations. So let's dive into that Gaussian splat workflow and then we'll come back to the tracking data. I'm sure if you are this deep into this video or series of videos, that it's likely you've probably heard of a Gaussian splat. It's a way to have a photo reel 3D scene in real time using a volume of sprites that blend together. So there isn't a mesh or polygon count. I'm sure someone can give a much better description of what a Gaussian splat is, but for our purposes, all we need to know is that it is volume based and not mesh based. So how do we get this into JetSet? Typically, I'm exporting USD files for the scene, which have decimated geometry and a low-res version of the materials. To me, these decimated USDs are incredibly helpful to see on set. They make framing these VFX shots so much better and more specific. It's really exciting for me to see, but then I'll throw it up on screen and your average person or your cast and most of your crew who aren't as familiar with the VFX process look at it and think, that doesn't look very good. With a Gaussian splat, you can see the entire scene with lighting and all the full res detail. I made my first Gaussian splat testing this out. I animated a camera circling the room and rendered that out in Eevee. I used both polycam and post shot to make splats. Both ended up with splats of the scene that looked great to view, but both had issues with the scale and origin point not being accurate to the actual scene from Blender. Then Elliot from Lightcraft came to the rescue. He used a Blender add-on and a script that he wrote to basically automate the process from Blender scene to Gaussian splat ready for Jet Set with only a few clicks. It uses free software, which are Blender, Reality Capture, which is part of the Epic Games Unreal Engine, and PostShot. Elliot and his team are working on getting this workflow fully integrated to the Blender add-on. So once that becomes available, I can do more of a deep dive into this process that's more tutorial-esque. But for now, this is basically the workflow that it was. In Blender in the AutoShot add-on, under the Splat training, choose Icosphere Pattern Mesh. This creates an Icosphere that you scale into your scene. Choose Camera Track Facing Normals, and a camera will animate pointing around your scene based on the normals of the icosphere sides. This will generate images of your entire scene. Export Reality Capture XMP creates metadata files for those images. Running another script puts these images and metadata through Reality Capture and packages it all in a way so that you can drag and drop right into PostShot to create your Gaussian splat. Then you just watch it populate. Similar to USD files, the splats also need to be small enough to not crash the Jet Set app. I made three versions of the Gaussian splat to test on this shoot by pausing post shot, saving a splat, then continuing the process. The more detailed splats did cause some Jet Set crashing, but the lower resolution ones didn't. And that's why these backgrounds have a more painterly feel. There's actually a Gaussian splat setting within JetSet that'll decimate your Gaussian splat for you. When I was first running all these tests, I didn't realize that was there in the menu. It's in settings and then settings. Even at a lower resolution, I thought using this Gaussian splat was light years ahead of using a USD file with a material texture. Before this, we would have to take a portion of a take and run it through AutoShot so that we can generate a Blender project with our footage to see what the shot looks like in the context of the scene. We don't really need to do that step throughout when we can just see what the lighting is gonna be right there in JetSet. JetSet can show both a Gaussian splat and a USD file in real time. So in our case, I imported the Gaussian splat and also a USD file with just the bytes animation and audio. JetSet will occlude your actor if there's something in your 3D scene closer to the camera than they are. And that's one of the really cool features of JetSet. 
Because a Gaussian splat is a volume of sprites, however, sometimes those sprites would also include either bytes or the actor in Jet Set in real time. It personally didn't bother me just because it would happen here and there, but something to note when using a Gaussian splat versus using a USD file with mesh geometry. This is not the definitive uh, video about using Gaussian splats with Jet Set. This is kind of like the new thing that I was trying for this episode, but definitely keep following along because this workflow will definitely be ironed out, certainly by the time we're working on the last episode. Now let's get into that tracking data from the second Jet Set camera. I start by syncing all my production footage, production sound, and Jet Set clips together. This time on set, we made sure all the time codes aligned. So when running AutoShot, the sync between cinema footage and jet set data is instant, instead of scanning the frames looking for that QR code slate. I choose the frames of a shot for both cameras and run them through AutoShot. Then I'm gonna bring the Bytes Cam from one generated Blender project into my main Blender project. When using the Cine version of Jet Set, AutoShot will give you a Blender project and tracking data that's at the same frame rate as your footage. In our case, that's 24 frames per second. For the version of Jet Set that's just using your iPhone camera, it comes in at 30 frames per second. It's because of the real-time tracking technology that's being used under the hood. They use ARKit, and that is hard-locked at 30 frames per second. So what does this mean? When you append the second camera and bring it into your project that's at 24 frames per second, it's not gonna line up. Unlike editing software, it won't just play at a different frame rate. One second of the Bytes cam is 30 frames, but in our 24 FPS project, that means one second of animation takes an extra six frames. We need to make the whole thing play faster by taking our keyframes and scaling them down. To do that, place your cursor on the first keyframe, hit A to select everything, S to scale, and then type 0.8, which is 24 divided by 30. And now our motion syncs up. But you'll notice here that even though the motion matches, the location of the Bytes cam isn't matching with the iPhone in the footage. This is where the 3D scans of the set really came in handy. Looking at the mesh of the scans from the two phones, they aligned pretty well, and the location of where Bytes should be made sense. But then when I looked at the unkeyed footage, I could see that the green psych in the footage and the scan didn't align. So I rotated the empty that controls the camera and footage, eyeballing it, and there we go. We have the location of Bytes in 3D space, and it aligns with our little droid in the footage. I don't know why this was misaligned, I've never had that specific problem before, but it does go to show how having all of this data from the Jet Set app makes an adjustment like this super simple. Before I realized this was the issue, I was trying to adjust the empty that controls the Bytes cam. I couldn't eyeball it properly, uh, but because I had all of this data from Jet Set, it took me two seconds to actually fix it once uh, I knew what the issue was. So when I bring an FBX file of the Bytes animation, I can make sure Bytes' head is always in the right place. Keep commenting about things you want to see in more detail. I'm going full speed ahead on the Tidbits and Bytes episodes and these YouTube videos, but knowing where it's helpful to really dive into the nitty gritty details for maybe just like a standalone tutorial is super helpful for me. And I can definitely start working on those things for you um, as I'm working on this project as well. If you wanna try the Jet Set app for free, you can get it from the Apple Store and get the AutoShot app from Lightcraft's website.